What are those bars for? Those are color bars, so you can adjust the color on your screen. What if you don't have color television? Never thought of that. Good question. <laughs> Smaller ones run on gaseous propane, the large ones run on liquid propane, and we had to feed. We tried to get two to run side by side, but the frequencies tended to interfere with each other. The origin of the of the engine is actually the V1 that was used in, uh, in World War II. It's what the, uh, the Germans launched. It oh, really? Oh, yeah. So it's been largely a forgotten technology. Turbine engines took over, and this was kind of left in the dust. But there's no moving parts. Huh? No moving parts whatsoever. We can, oh, we can get your camera and see the inside of it a little better. Cool. And it's all just acoustically driven. You rolled off of the That baby's hot, huh? Yeah, that clamp actually dented the combustion chamber just from that amount of spring force. Those, those uh, things are uh, surprising. Uh, they are acoustical machines, you know. Instead of moving parts that uh, the other uh, jet engines have inside, uh, they use uh, sound waves to do the stuff that mechanical parts do in other jet engines. That's why they have no moving parts. They're using waves of sound to compress air, pull air, push air, and this sound is pr produced by uh, by those explosions. And they vary by the by the shape of the motor? Yeah, uh, the, the, by the shape, by the way they're fueled, by the the way their pipes are uh, are shaped, you know, just like different musical instruments look different. You right. look at, at the at the uh, wind blow, um, blowing instruments uh, the, to produce music, and they all look different. It's trumpet and clarinet and saxophone, they all look very different. So we, uh, among other things, we're 
trying to see which shapes produce uh, the, the the best effects. Ah, the like most a, yeah, like a reed in a in yeah, a clarinet exactly, or something. Yeah, exactly. Like there are uh, there are actually yeah. those engines that do employ reeds, like like a clarinet, for uh -huh. instance. So. speed of sound actually changes with temperature and the, of course the length of the engine is relatively fixed. They do tend to grow uh, as, the, as they heat, especially the, uh, the stainless steel ones tend to expand more. They have more of an elongation factor, but the speed of sound changes substantially with temperature. Really? Yes. So as they warm up, they, uh, they undergo changes and, uh, and once you're used to it, you can actually hear it, what's, what's called lock in. When they lock in and all the acoustics are right, that's when they really start to hammer and, and they really start to produce the We built and ran it in a day huh. out here on Bivouac. Yep. Cut it up with a hacksaw and a torch, huh? Yeah. Just We brought everything that we might possibly need to build an engine on site. Oh, cool. <laughs> shut off quick don't they yes. yeah once it misses one beat it's dead that's it, it huh it's it it, it has to that. do that uh this one's doing about i think 200 and 265 hertz so 265 times a second it's making a pop in there and the, if you miss one pop there is no acoustic energy to continue it one pop out of it it's just it's relying on that pop to to happen in here, travel all the way down the pipe, literally bounces off the end of the pipe, the opening at the end of the pipe, and comes back into the combustion chamber, and that has to happen to touch off the next, uh, the next pot. And uh, if it doesn't, it stops. Interesting. The easiest thing to make, the most difficult thing to understand, and there's definitely a learning curve on just uh, getting the fueling and the spark and the, and, uh, and the starting technique down.